Something's gotta give. Yeah, something's gotta change. I can't keep going on like this. I'm trying to do the right thing, but I'm not getting anywhere. You know how it is. Heidi ho, YouTubers. How my recent video about the Harbor Freight Solar Kit I bought. And on my good YouTube friend Josiah's Backpacks video about buying one, I noticed some comments where folks didn't quite understand how this stuff works. It's not that they're freaks or anything. I want to make that clear. It's just that this electrical stuff can be, well, in the realm of a mad scientist for a lot of folks. The truth is, a lot of us don't really understand. Hey, you plug something in the wall outlet, and it works. As long as you pay the bill, right? In order to explain how these little systems work, I've got to delve back into my memory, to my high school vocational class in electronics. <clears throat> um, 33 years ago. My memory's not too good, but we'll give it the best shot we can. If you're an electrical engineer or something, feel free to correct me, but let's not get too technical. We're just trying to help folks understand how to put together a really cheap solar system for a few minor creature comforts in case there's a, well, a power outage of some sort. So this is a picture of my old well head at the house, the hand pump. By the way, for one scuba man, yours is new and shiny, but hey, mine's 50 years old and it still works. So anyhow, let's say we want to take our hand pump and use it to turn a water wheel on a little grain mill we have. So we hook up a hose to the hand pump. I usually spend a little more time on the graphics in my videos, but hey, I got a lot of them to do for this one. Now the volume of water that we can pump out of our hose, in simple electrical terms, we're going to call amps. How hard you pump up and down on the handle of our pump. Not how fast, mind you, we'll get into that later, but how much muscle it takes to push the handle up and down. We'll call that volts. Let's say the water wheel itself is pushing back on us and making it harder to push that handle up and down. In electrical terms, that's called ohms. These three things, volts, ohms, and amps, have a mathematical relationship. If you know two of them, you can find out the other by using something called Ohm's Law. I means amps, and R means resistance, or ohms. You can change this around in different configurations to find out any of the three that you might need to. And once you have that, you can use another little equation to find out how much grain we can grind in our little mill. We'll call that watts. You can measure the amount of electricity that you use by expressing it in how many watts times how many hours. Like the electrical company bills you in thousand watt increments by the hour or kilowatt hours. If we took the water from our magic water wheel and dumped it back into the well and then just recirculated it round and round, that would be the same thing as DC, or direct current. 
Now let's say our magic water pump gets really crazy. When you push down on the handle, the water goes one way. But then if you pull up on the handle, the water stops and travels in the other direction. That would be called AC, or alternating current. If you pumped really fast, like 60 times a second back and forth, and the water would travel back and forth a tiny bit, 60 times every second. That's what you get in house current, at least in the U.S. If you ever hear the term 60 hertz, now you know what that means. Have I lost you yet? It's pretty confusing stuff, I have to admit. Now solar panels generate their electricity from the sun in DC. And the sun only shines during the day. So we've got to find a way to store that juice up for the night time. We're going to put a water tower in our little system. That way we can stop pumping sometimes and still run water out of the tower to run our water wheel. So our pump becomes solar cells and our water tower is batteries. In my little system I'm using 12 volts. You could get better efficiency if you go to 24 or 48, but hey, 12 is the cheap way to go. Our magic water wheel becomes all the stuff we want to use in our house. But there's a problem. The stuff in the house runs on 110 volts AC, and our batteries and solar panels are running 12 volts. We've got to put a device in between the two that converts the juice. That's called an inverter. We don't want our water tower to overflow or go empty. That would ruin it in the case of batteries. So we have to get another device called a charge controller to manage that end of the situation. There are lots of other bits and pieces, diodes and fans to vent your batteries, etc., that you could put on. But hopefully, I've given you enough information to understand how the basics of a little cheap solar system works. I hope it helped anyway. Something's gotta give.